Hi everyone and welcome to another video by BioTeach, this time focusing on the Unit 7 Applied Science and specifically looking at how to start planning for the questions that I've already discussed. Many of you will have already seen the videos I've posted on each of those questions. If not, feel free to scroll down to the description of this video where I've pasted the links and make sure you watch them first as it will make a bit more sense that way. So the aim of this video is to remind you of the questions that you'll be asked and some tips you need to consider when it comes to the planning. So as a reminder, question number one is always to discuss the implications of the scientific issue identified in the articles. And this is where you'll talk about the social, economic, perhaps even political, the environmental and the ethical implications of the scientific issue. Question number two is always to identify the different organisations or individuals mentioned in the three articles and to suggest how they may have an influence on the scientific issue. Question three is to discuss whether article three has made valid judgments. You've got to consider how it's been interpreted, the conclusions that they've made, the validity and the reliability of data and any references that they've included to other sources of information and overall judge whether it's valid or reliable. And question four is about suggesting potential areas for further development and or research into the scientific issue from the three articles. Don't forget question five is not the same each year and whilst you can spend some time planning for this, you won't know what you'll be asked until the day of the exam. So please watch my video on this to understand it a little bit better. The first thing I want to suggest is putting together a table that looks a bit like this for your plan. In this table I've got some headings in the left hand column and on the top I've got articles 1, 2 and 3 in each of those columns. The headings are designed to help you plan for each of the questions. So for example the source of information will contribute towards question 1 and question 3. It only needs to be one word really about where it was published. The individuals and organisations mentioned are for question two, the references used is relevant for question three as is the validity and the future development part is more useful for question four. Breaking each article down like this on an A4 paper might help you gather your thoughts and have an at a glance plan about the various things you might want to talk about. This might also be something that you do initially as you're reading your articles but might not actually include it in your final plan, that's completely up to you. Remember that you're only allowed to take in four sides of A4 as a plan and this table will most likely take up one entire side. So if you look at it and you think, mm, I don't really think this is going to be too useful, then don't bother doing this. Perhaps design your own table, which will serve you better. So when we're looking at question number one, there are various things I need you to consider. For example, in your plan and your essay, you might want to outline the main issue as the opening sentence. Explain what it's about and who it affects and where. For example, is it a global issue or a local one? You might want to outline possible solutions to the issues you've identified, or you may have stated there are some problems that are caused by that scientific issue. That can form a whole paragraph in your essay. You could discuss advantages and disadvantages to the issue and how you would tackle them. And perhaps you might want to consider the global implications or the responsibility that we have. For question two, you should be looking to mention six individuals and organisations to have a better chance of getting all of the marks. I usually say to my students they should start with the one who they think has the biggest influence and then work their way through the list to talk about how they actually influence the issue. You might want to put a note as to what the person's job is to get you started on the answer. I would like to just reiterate that for the six marks, you don't have to mention six individuals or organisations, but it does help if you do, particularly if you don't want to go into too much detail about each of those. For question three, I would usually suggest to start with the definitions of validity and reliability. These go in your plan so you can transfer them into the essay quite nicely to open it up. I would mention the references used by the writers. Where was the article published and does this add to the reliability and validity? Who wrote it? What is their experience? Are there other organisations that add to the validity? And make sure that you conclude with your own thoughts about validity and reliability. For question number four, you need to consider how to move the technology forward. Is the improvement that you're suggesting targeted at a specific need? And what impact will that change have? That is to say, what's the impact if that change was to happen? That's what I mean by that. 
Is there a potential for wider use for the improvement that you're suggesting? If there is, it's more likely to be implemented. And if you're suggesting a new design or something like that, you might want to consider whether it can be patented, which could stand to benefit the inventor in terms of monetary gain. And finally, for question number five, you need to ensure that you use the scenario that's given and write towards a particular target audience that they've asked you to. Direct your writing with the appropriate tone and language, as well as the strengths and the weaknesses or benefits and limitations of the issue that they've asked you to address in the question. I find my students often need to get some guidance on how long to spend on each question, especially as some of them are only worth five marks and some are worth 15. It isn't enough to spread the time evenly across all of the questions as you'll have to write more for some of the questions. So I would recommend the following timings. For question number one, there's 12 marks awarded. I normally recommend you spend 30 to 36 minutes. 30 minutes if you want to allow about six minutes checking time to read through your answer to make sure it's error free or 36 if you're really running out of time. Question number two, six marks awarded. So anywhere from 15 to 18 minutes, 15 minutes if you want to allow checking time. Question number three is also worth 12 marks. So it's the same as question one between 30 and 36 minutes. Question four is worth five marks, so I would recommend you spend 10 to 15 minutes writing your answer for that. And question five is worth 15, so I would say between 40 and 45 minutes. I have allowed around 25 minutes checking time, so around five minutes per question, so that you can ensure that you've not got any mistakes in your work. But of course, that's probably the first thing to kind of go when you're in an exam and you're trying to get all your thoughts down. So it's really important to remember that your two and a half hours should be spent really wisely. Do allow some checking time, but you might find that you only need 10 minutes checking time or 15 minutes checking time. So use your own judgment for this. So I hope that was super useful for you all. At the time of filming this video, we're only about five weeks away from the release of part A for the January 2021 sit of this unit. So when you come back after half term, you'll be learning the last few parts of that unit preparing for your exam. Please ensure that you access all my other content by subscribing to my channel and sharing my videos with anyone else who might benefit. Feel free to leave me any questions or comments underneath this video. Best of luck to everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.